We all know the story of the Garden of Eden. What if I told you that scientists have discovered evidence of paradise? Would you believe it? For those who don't know, the Garden of Eden is known in biblical scriptures and throughout the world as the paradise that God created for the first human beings, Adam and Eve. Muslims and Christians may disagree on some points, but when it comes to the Garden, they agree that it was the first home of mankind here on earth, a place where Adam and Eve could settle and live peacefully with all the comforts offered by the Garden, with one condition, not to eat the fruit from the forbidden tree. However, the first couple did not obey and were expelled from Eden. This story has intrigued many experts who later tried to designate the location of this incredible place. They used the Bible and the Quran in their research. Today's video is about the symbol that the Garden of Eden has become in various cultures and, of course, its possible location. But before we reveal this story, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and activate the notification bell to receive new episodes. Where is the garden? Many places have been suggested as possible locations for paradise, mainly because the Bible does not specify the exact location, but suggests that it is in the east. Given this information, various places have been advocated as the home of the first man and woman on earth. In the book of Genesis in the Bible, it is mentioned that the garden was surrounded by four rivers, two of which were the Euphrates and the Tigris. Because of this information, Mesopotamia was considered. Despite the rivers, Eden was a place with perfect vegetation for the couple's sustenance, and for this reason, Lebanon was also considered as a possible location. Other places were also considered, including the United States and Jerusalem. All this discussion about the location of the Garden of Eden could come to an end if an archaeologist is correct. She claims that the Garden is in Jerusalem, and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the place considered by Christians as the holiest in the world is where the Garden of Eden is located. Her idea contradicts the information from Genesis about the four rivers. However, the Garden is treated as the place where God's presence exists, and thanks to this concept, Jerusalem was considered as Eden. Emperor Constantine, knowing this, thought that if Eden was indeed in Jerusalem, God's created paradise would have been completely obliterated as it would all be beneath the church. As we have seen, it was erected by Constantine, the Roman emperor of the fourth century, and it was only built because his mother, Saint Helena, wished to find the empty tomb of Jesus Christ. She found a tomb and assumed it was Jesus's. Saint Helena also found a Calvary, and for this reason, Constantine ordered the construction of the church on the site. Researchers in Judaism and archeology span in Greece and Israel who participated in about 20 excavations, hold a strong opinion when it comes to James Cameron's documentary, The Lost Tomb of Jesus. They criticize the director, who proposes that Jesus was a wealthy man and was buried in the tomb along with his family. The tomb was discovered in 1980, approximately five kilometers away from the ancient city of Jerusalem. They counter the idea presented by James and advocate the belief that Jesus was a poor man who couldn't afford an expensive tomb. If he were a wealthy man, according to them, he would be buried in Nazareth. We know the story that Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden shortly after eating the forbidden fruit. An interesting fact is that they would have lived forever if they hadn't disobeyed, according to biblical information. Adam lived for 960 years, and Eve a little less, around 800. Besides death, there were other punishments for the two, including the pains of childbirth. Various cultural and religious traditions share this narrative about Eden in their cultures. From Jewish, Christian, and Islamic traditions to Mormons, all view humanity after its creation as responsible for caring for the garden created for them. The term Eden has various possible meanings, and what is known is that it could be Sumerian, meaning step, or plain, relating to a well-irrigated area. Another explanation suggests that Eden is a word that means pleasure in Hebrew, in addition to being the name of the place. The story continues to describe the magnificent vegetation of the garden, 
and the trees with delicious fruits that God placed for sustenance, including the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. However, there was a fruit forbidden by God that Adam and Eve, influenced by a serpent identified as Satan, eventually consumed. This resulted in the original sin and the fall of humanity. Many theologians, including Augustine of Hippo, focus not only on the wickedness and disobedience but also on the fruit that was ingested. The prophet Ezekiel also mentioned the garden in his prophetic writings. He refers to the Son of Man and states that he was in the garden of God, which was adorned with precious stones such as sardius, topaz, diamond, turquoise, onyx, jasper, sapphire, carbuncle, emerald, and gold. Musical instruments such as tambourines and flutes were made from these precious stones. The text continues to describe the perfection of the Son of Man until iniquity was found in him. Once again, while there are detailed descriptions of the garden and its features, the exact location of Eden is not specified in this text. According to Genesis, a river served to water the garden, and it was a great river divided into four parts, namely the Pishon, the Gihon, the Tigris, and the Euphrates. Only two of the four rivers mentioned in the Bible have been identified, so the most widely accepted version is that the location of Eden is in southern Mesopotamia. This view is shared and agreed upon by many experts, even though Mesopotamia stands as a strong and accepted version among scholars. There is no other version of Eden that suggests the garden as a highland plateau due to the information. Iran was also considered by David Roll, a British Egyptologist, but this view is not widely supported by scholars. The Bible places the garden in the east, but there are theories that place it in the United States and England as possible locations of Eden, such as in Jackson County, Missouri, advocated by Mormons, and the hypothesis of preacher Elvis Calli, who locates the garden near the Apalachicola River in Florida. We've discussed extensively the Christian culture and Eden, but other cultures also incorporate the concept of a garden into their traditions. In Greek mythology, for example, there is an orchard with golden fruits that granted immortality. Hercules stole some of these fruits, known as the peaches of immortality. Chinese culture also offers interesting examples of this concept. To approximate this resemblance, we now turn to the Quran. For Muslims, a garden is indicated as the post-death paradise, the place where the righteous will go, also known as the fourth call of heaven. This doesn't necessarily mean it's the dwelling place of Adam. For them, the focus shouldn't be on the earthly location of the garden, but rather on the expulsion of Adam and Eve after the temptation by Satan. The Quran diverges from the Holy Bible at some points, such as the case of the tree. For them, there was only one tree of immortality, and the story repeats regarding the prohibition of the fruit. Muslims aren't concerned with the earthly location of the garden. They believe Eden is an earthly place, but not one they need to seek. Meanwhile, some scholars wonder if the garden was on earth or in heavenly paradise. The reason this questioning arose is that Eden was never seen in life. However, followers of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, believe that Adam is at a historic Mormon site in Missouri. The leaders of this religion believe the prophecy will be fulfilled when Adam returns to the Garden of Eden on Judgment Day. This garden is located in Jackson County, Missouri, according to Mormon preachers. Despite available information, there's no text that clearly expresses this prophecy before the church's founder, Joseph Smith. The Garden of Eden can be in heaven, as we've seen throughout this video. It can be considered both divine and earthly, and there is agreement among scholars who assert this theory. The earthly Eden would be a fertile and lush land with good vegetation, while the divine is treated as superior, the home of righteous souls, whether they be Jewish or not. It's virtually impossible to pinpoint the exact location of the Garden of Eden with the few clues available. This is one of those mysteries that are very difficult to answer. However, every time a new theory about its location arises, it excites enthusiasts of the subject, and experts continue to discuss until a new possibility, different from the previous one, is considered. Our world is full of questions for which we can't find definitive answers. Historians, archaeologists, and others encourage this quest through stimulating discussions for those interested in the subject. And you? Where do you think the Garden of Eden is located? 
Which theory do you find most interesting? Don't forget to comment and share your opinion with us. Send this video to your friends and family to find out their views on the matter. And please, remember to subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up.